When I found you in the wreckage of that ship, I considered leaving you. Zack Snyder's been busy creating a brand new space opera franchise, and now he's ready to share it with the world. Here's everything you need to know before you go to your couch to see Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. What do you think they want? Let's talk about who made it. It pretty much begins and ends with Zack Snyder, like not even exaggerating. He directed, produced, did the cinematography, co-wrote the screenplay, and is credited for the story. I mean, if this man also did the accounting on the film, I would not be surprised. Actually, I probably would. Anyways, of course, we all know that Zack Snyder knows a thing or two about big budget franchise type stuff. I mean, he previously directed films like 300 and Watchmen before his long and impactful stint with the DCEU. And of course, we cannot forget his gig doing music videos for bands like my Chemical Romance. I'm so sorry I had to throw that in there, but fun fact, My Chemical Romance are actually big comic book fans and they actually covered a Bob Dylan song for Watchmen. It's so good. Anyways, the other two screenplay writers are Kurt Johnstad from movies like 300 and Atomic Blonde and Shay Hatton from a couple John Wick flicks. The director also teamed up with Tom Hulkenberg to do the music and he actually scored past Snyder films like Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice, and Zack Snyder's Justice League. So the Rebel Moon is in good hands, but what exactly is it? you might and should be asking. Well, it comes from ideas that have been bouncing around Snyder's head since he was 12, and it actually draws inspiration from the works of Akira Kurosawa, heavy metal magazines, and of course, Star Wars movies. In fact, it began its development journey as a more mature Star Wars film that Zack had actually pitched to Lucasfilm back when Disney first took over in 2012. He also pitched it as a video game slash movie franchise to Warner Brothers a couple times too, before eventually landing at Netflix. As far as the story goes, we know the universe it's set in is controlled by the corrupt government of the mother world. Meanwhile, a peaceful settlement on a distant moon has become threatened by the mother world's army called the Imperium. But hope is found in one mysterious villager and former Imperium member known as Korra, and she's tasked with putting together similar warriors to help fight for their cause. And speaking of Korra, Let's talk about who is actually starring in this. So bringing this story to life on screen is a rather talented cast. Starting with the star and the total badass from the trailers, Sofia Boutella as Cora. The dancer turned actress has had some bigger roles that you might recognize like Blade Legs Lady in the first Kingsman film or Princess Amanette in Tom Cruise's version of The Mummy. And much like Snyder, she has a strong music video resume too that includes artists like Madonna, Rihanna, Neo, MJ, and Foo Fighters. I mean, that's an insane resume. So her character recruits a ragtag team of fighters played by a bunch of familiar faces. Friends like Jaimon Hunsu, Charlie Hunnam, Jenna Malone, and Ray Fisher. There's a bunch of others too, but research shows that video editors hate lists of names. Now on the villain side, one of the main baddies is Ed Skrine, who also played the villain in Deadpool, and he's playing the leader of the Imperium Army in Rebel Moon. Some other faces you'll know include Corey Stoll and Carrie Elwes, and you'll also hear the voice of Anthony Hopkins. And if you're missing his face already like I am, just refer to his dancing videos on his Instagram. Okay, let's talk about the future now because uh, that's where my anxiety causes me to live. This movie is hopefully just the beginning for Zack Snyder and friends, and to ensure that this is more than just a one and done flick, all kinds of media is in motion for this already. Along with adding a part one to the title to make sure we know more is coming, things like multiple video games, an animated short, a graphic novel, a novelization of the film, a prequel comic, a narrative podcast, and even plans for a TV series focusing on the main villain are all in the works. I mean, should I add part one to the beginning of all my relationships just to ensure this type of devotion? I mean, this is wild. Plus, we know that the movie Rebel Moon Part 2, The Scar Giver, is actually already scheduled for release in April of next year. So for more on that, we, of course, will see you right back here in a few months. All right, my friends, it's everything you need to know before you go see Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire, on Netflix December 22nd. Thanks for watching, and be sure to rate and review this film at RottenTomatoes.com.